Hi. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm excited that God is still on the throne. I'm excited that God loves me. I'm excited because I belong to a church which is which only which is its only desire is to serve Jesus. The Bible says that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And Ashbourne Elim is proving just that. The virus couldn't slow us down. The virus couldn't stop us because we've got spirit-filled men wanting to serve Jesus and we're reaching out more and more. I thank God for that. I thank God for the, vi for the vaccine against the virus. I thank God for spring and everything it promises, the new life, the new promises that we'll be getting out again. Marge and I love to give out seed cards. We've been stopped for a year, but we want to get on with our ministry. Because that's the ministry we've got at the moment, what God has given us to do. And everybody who's been held back can get on with their ministry. But you might think you've not got a ministry. You might think I can't do anything for Jesus. But that just isn't true. There's only one thing you need. A willing heart and a desire to serve God. To obey him for wherever he leads us. And it might not be very big. It might not be very big in your eyes, but it's important. We've all got an important ministry. My first minute, when I first got saved, all I wanted to do was serve Jesus. And the first ministry I had was handing in books out of the door. I was thrilled. I was doing something for Jesus. I was actually welcoming people in, shaking their hands and giving them a hymn book. Oh, I was over the moon. The next ministry I had was... Um, doing the cleaning and putting the chairs straight and I did it with a vigour because I was thrilled once again to be able to, to, be, to be serving Jesus, to be working in the church. And, 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 uh, then another thing, after that uh, I noticed that not everybody in church had a Bible and I talked it over with the pastor and we decided to um, that we should have a little bookshop at the back and so I set about doing that. And I went to a place called, a, a Bible bookshop called The Place of God's Word. That was where I met Marjorie. It was her shop. Of course, I didn't know then that I was going to marry her. But um, we came to an agreement that um, I could take the books and Bibles, I'll have a little stall at the back of church, and um, what I didn't sell, I could set back at the end of the month, swap them over, and, uh, and carry on like that. And it was a very big success. You know, people loved it. I even had a go at preaching with the, with the um, pastors back in. I was rubbish. <laughs> I can honestly say that. I could spend three weeks writing, writing out what I was going to say. I'd deliver the whole thing in less than five minutes and I had such a boring way of doing it, I would have sent myself to sleep. But at least I had a go. So I've never done preaching since. I've just, I'm just not, not, not cut out for it. And then um, when the church, the church started having outreaches in the streets of, of town centre where they'd play music and we'd give out tracks. Well, I used to go on them, but to be quite honest, this is 40 years ago, I was, I was very nervous. And I, I did it, but I didn't do it with... Um, I didn't do it with peace in my mind. I wasn't I, where other people would get up and give their testimonies. I wouldn't. I'd just stand at the back and sing when they sang, and I realised I wasn't very good at sharing my testimony with people and leading people to the Lord because I I used to get tongue tied. So I prayed, Lord, how can I share my testimony with, testimony with people? How can I lead people to the Lord? And I, I'm okay at writing. So the Lord put it on my heart to write a letter, have it um, printed. In those days, we didn't have printers. We had to go to a printer's. <clears throat> Telling people my testimony, inviting them to church. So I got about a 1,000 printed, and I went all around every house on the estate, pushing them through. We didn't have much success, but we did have some. I mean, I don't know how, how much success, how many people... Um, responded in their hearts, but as far as getting visitors to church, we only got a few people come. But I was still working for Jesus, and it was wonderful.
was then then it came to me about giving out tracts. I gave out tracts with the other people, but I noticed that they were being thrown on the floor. And I thought, this is a while later, and I thought, Lord, why are they throwing them away? I need something that people will keep. And that is when the Lord gave me the idea about doing seed cards. This was years after me getting saved, but he gave me uh, the idea about giving seed cards. And you know, I've never seen one of those thrown away. The Lord gave the first seed card he gave me was Why Jesus? And I was thrilled. I wrote it down, I printed it, and the Lord gave me the idea to um, put them into, you know, little, well, you've seen the size of them, that people could put in their wallet and keep. And I've never seen one thrown away. And the Lord led me on to write many more. And I'd changed churches by now, and the church, the Lord had laid it on the church's heart to go out pushing tracks through people's doors. Well, I wasn't very pleased with tracks, as I've already said. So I prayed about that, and the Lord encouraged me to write what I called the good news letter, a little story written by me. It was just a, a little pamphlet folded over A4 on the front, and the first page I'd write um, a little encouraging word. Then I'd put one of my poems, then on the back we just put all the information about the church, and that went down very well. In the end, we got to giving out a thousand a month round the different houses, a huge estate it was, and uh, we managed to get a thousand a month going out. I was thrilled with that. <clears throat> In the meantime, the Lord laid it on our hearts that we should be getting on with other churches, and um, he laid it on margin at my heart to have dinner parties. So we used to invite people from other churches to eat once, once a month again to these dinner parties. And we all have a meal. We, we always made sure there was at least two people there who weren't Christians because we wanted to minister to the lost as well as joining churches together. And um, we'd have a lovely meal and, and a chat and then we'd show a Christian video. And they went down very well for several years. And you, you, you see, the Lord always has something for you to do. And we were just thrilled, and we're still thrilled, to be able to serve the Lord. Now, I can't do things I used to do because of health and one thing or another, and age. But I know the Lord is still, still has got something to do for me to do. And he's got something for you to do. And it doesn't matter how humble it is. But God is calling you to serve him today. I know that many of you are serving him. And I know that God's blessing you. But for anyone who hasn't got that ministry, hasn't got a feeling for the ministry, I want to say this. If the Lord hasn't given you a ministry of, of your own... In the Bible, it says that one of the ministries is the ministries of helps. Get behind someone who else has got a ministry. Help them with their ministry. Help them, whatever it is. And it's um, and God will reward you. And don't despise small beginnings. The Lord tests our faithfulness first, that we will do these things. And he leads us on and he helps us and he takes us from strength to strength. So I'm just going to read a little poem about your important ministry. Dear brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Don't make light of your ministry. We're in this together and our only aim is to bring praise and glory to Jesus' name. Whether preaching the gospel or cleaning the loo, your job is important whatever you do whether cleaning the floors or making the tea or helping someone in their ministry. You might send out leaflets, carry someone in prayer, or let someone in need know that you're there. Whatever you're doing for Jesus is right, so do what you're doing with all of your might. God bless you all, everyone. Bye. <laughs>